Hey everybody, my name is Lee Yanko. I'm a product manager here at Google Cloud, and I'm here today to talk about observability in depth with a deep dive on managed service for Prometheus, our new Prometheus compatible monitoring solution. So what are we gonna talk about today? First of all, what is managed service for Prometheus? And then we're gonna go straight into a couple demos. First, we're gonna set up managed collection. Then we're gonna set up Cube Prometheus via the self-deployed collection route. And then we're going to show you how to attribute volume to different namespaces. What is Prometheus? Uh, for those that don't know, it's a popular monitoring tool backed by CNCF, uh, widely considered to be the de facto standard for Kubernetes monitoring. Although it is used for VM monitoring as well, uh, just not as it's not as popular for that. Somewhere around 60% of users of Kubernetes users use Prometheus, uh, and that number is growing. So Prometheus comes with a couple other standards. So PromQL used to query uh, Prometheus metrics. And then Grafana, while not part of the Prometheus product itself, is often used hand in hand with Prometheus to visualize Prometheus metrics. The alert manager product that also comes with Prometheus uh, is technically a separate program, but it is used to uh, route and inhibit alerts once they are fired from Prometheus. So in the Prometheus ecosystem, Prometheus sits in the center. Prometheus is configured to scrape metrics and then it pulls them into its time series database. Uh, when an alert fires, it sends the alert out to alert manager, which then routes it to PagerDuty or Slack or whatever you use for alert uh, and incident resolution. And then you set up Grafana to query Prometheus so that you can see these metrics live. So with managed service for Prometheus, you get a global and globally scalable Prometheus while everything else stays the same. So your alert manager configs, your Grafana setup, your Prometheus scrape configs, all of that stays exactly the same. And the hard part, the actual scaling of infrastructure is outsourced to Google. There's two different ways to deploy it, uh, managed and self-deployment collection, and I'll get into that in just a second. This works anywhere that Prometheus does. You can often upgrade a local Prometheus to manage service for Prometheus by just changing one or two lines of deployment configurations. This is open source, so you can see what's running in your cluster. It has two-year retention by default for all metrics, and it shares a backend in APIs with cloud monitoring so that you can graph your Prometheus metrics right alongside your cloud monitoring metrics. So there are two different collection options. There's managed collection for those that are okay with trading off some configuration flexibility in exchange for a fully hands-off experience where Google manages the scaling, the sharding, the deployment, making sure that they're stable, uh, all the collection uh, of Prometheus metrics. While self-deployed collection is good for those with extensive existing Prometheus configs that they want to just keep using, or for those people that want to use some of the long tail features of Prometheus that managed collection doesn't support. And you can use both of these together. So you can have managed collection for the bulk of your metrics and then self-deployed collection for certain metrics that just can't be configured to be scraped with managed collection. So with that, let's jump into a demo and uh, see how it works. So first I'm gonna set up managed collection. So I have a fresh three node cluster here. I'm going to click in and connect via cloud shell. And then I'm gonna just go over to the get started with managed collection page and just start copy pasting in commands. It's really that straightforward. It's about four commands. So first I have to create a namespace, a GMP test namespace. I have to deploy the setup and operator manifests. For GKE clusters 1.22 and above, you can also do this step using gcloud or the API. I have to deploy an example application so that there's something that I can even scrape. And then configure a sample pod monitoring resource so that it actually scrapes the example application. So now if we go over to monitoring and click on manage Prometheus, we should be able to query this in about one minute while the scrape configs boot up and start scraping the data. So I'm gonna pause here until we have some data. And there we are, there's some data. So you can see there are two pods reporting from the cluster managed uh, cluster and then three pods from a previous cluster I had set up. Now uh, let's go into cloud monitoring and query these metrics as well. So you can click into metrics explorer, the resource type, we'll type in Prometheus target. 
for metric, we'll use our trusty up metric. And you can see the data is reporting within cloud monitoring as well. So if we group by cluster, you'll see we have our two clusters in this project reporting data here, uh, one more fresh than the other. So now let's set up Grafana and we can query via Grafana like most of you will end up doing. So once again, we will connect via Cloud Shell. We're gonna go over to the query data from the Prometheus service section. Now there's a couple things we have to do. So first of all, we have to sub in, uh, we have to create a service account for this project which I've already done, but know that if you haven't done that yet, you have to basically copy paste these commands here, uh, filling in project ID with your current project ID, authorize the service account, ditto, I've already done that. And then we have to deploy two things. So we have to deploy the Prometheus UI here. And uh, I'm gonna do that. So first of all, I need to get the project ID. So let me copy this. I'm going to fill in a variable here. Back over to Cloud Shell. Paste in command number one. And that should be, that's the, the that container is deployed. Now we go down to Grafana. And we deploy our example Grafana manifest here. We have to port forward Grafana to 3000. After it boots up, give it about one minute. And Grafana is running, so we're able to port forward it to 3000. Uh, because we're using Cloud Shell, we will pre preview it using the web preview button here. So change the port to 3000, hit change and preview, and Grafana should open. Now we're gonna log in with our super secret username and password of admin admin. Please don't tell anybody. And we have running Grafana. Now, before we can query the metrics, we need to set up the data source. So we go into configuration data sources, add a data source, click Prometheus. Over here, we need to copy paste in the URL of the other container that we deployed before Grafana. Go down here and change HTTP method to get, click save and test, everything should be good. Now we can create a dashboard. Once again, we will, we're, so we're on Mana Server for Prometheus. I forgot to rename it. Type in up and you should see data. And if we go sum by cluster up, then you'll see the two clusters are here. My old cluster that's sending data from about an hour ago. And then uh, this cluster that we just set up the observability cluster managed cluster. Cool. So that's managed collection. Let's move on to self-deployed collection. So say you are using Cube Prometheus and you want to send Cube Prometheus data to managed service with Prometheus. Let's walk through doing that and show you how simple it is to get started with global and globally scalable uh, Prometheus monitoring. So. We're going to go back into Cloud Shell. And I'm going to go over to the get started with self deployed collection section. Scroll down to Cube Prometheus. And uh, actually, I'm going to put a pin on this. I have to get Cube Prometheus set up first. So we'll do that by going to the GitHub uh, for Cube Prometheus. I've already downloaded this onto my local uh, VM. So all I have to do is apply these manifests to get Cube Prometheus up and running. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go into Cube Prometheus main, paste these three commands. And now Cube Prometheus is up and running, but just locally. So how do we get that to send data to manage service for Prometheus? Well, 
you have to change two lines in your manifests. So I'm going to open up Prometheus Prometheus.yaml. The first thing that I have to do is swap out the uh, regular image with the GMP image. So let's just copy pasting this line here. And then I have to set replicas to one so that we don't get duplicative data into the system. Once that's finished, I just have to reapply my manifests. And we have to wait for Cube Prometheus to boot up. So that just might take a second or two. All right. So I've waited uh, a couple minutes. I actually swapped over to another project just so uh, we don't have to wait for Cube Prometheus to boot up. But uh, I'm going to paste in the command to run Grafana from the Cube Prometheus GitHub page. That's the listening on port 3000. We'll open that. Once again, log in with our super secret admin admin username and password. And here you can see all the Cube Prometheus dashboards that you're used to using. So let's open up uh, the compute resources. Where is it? Compute resources by cluster page. So swapping between local Prometheus and managed service for Prometheus is really as simple as just changing this dropdown here. So as you can see, everything's refreshing, but nothing is really changing. All the data stays exactly the same in this chart, in this chart here. That's exactly what should happen. It should be exactly the same local data as, as is stored in, uh, in the foreign server. And that's it. That's how easy it is to get set up with Cube Prometheus. Uh, I've had this take under five minutes to get running. So now let's say you want to see your metrics from multiple projects all in the same place. How might you do that? So in cloud monitoring, we have a concept called a metric scope. A metric scope is a project that contains other projects. So let's tab over here, cloud monitoring. So you can see here, this metric scope contains one project. So I'm going to tab over to a project that I set up before that contains multiple projects, multi-project metric scope project. And you can see here, this contains four projects. If you click metric scope, you can see what those four projects are. And if you click add cloud projects to metric scope, you can go in and add even more projects to that scope. If I scroll down to manage Prometheus, and I type up, you'll see metrics from multiple projects here. So actually, if I type in sum by cluster up, you can see different clusters here from different projects, all showing in the same graph. And then you can get a view of all of your projects um, at any given time. A metric scope can contain more than one project. A project can belong to more than one metric scope. Uh, so you can mix and match and set up permissions uh, however you use projects to, uh, however you use projects to make sure that one development team can't uh, see another development team's metrics, et cetera. So you can have individual development teams use individual metric scopes that have single projects in them, while your SRE team has a metric scope with all of your projects in it. And that way you can get a global view of your data without stepping on each other's toes on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, for the last part of the demo, I'm going to show you how to attribute volume to different namespaces. So within Cloud Monitoring, click Metrics Explorer. For resource type, you want to go to Metric Ingestion Attribution. For metric, click Samples Written by Attribution ID. And then Group By, if you scroll down, Group By Attribution ID. Now, when you do that, you'll see a bunch of lines uh, that have the samples per second. If you click value, you'll order them from high to low by different namespace. So we can see here the monitoring namespace is responsible for the most volume, followed by the default namespace of the cube system namespace. If you go in and you also group by uh, metric type, you can see the individual metric names that are responsible for volume so that you can uh, identify them and then lower them if they're a problem here. Uh, I've also grouped by attribution ID. Attribution ID is hiding over here. But the, uh, the namespace is still there. It's just kind of hiding to the right of the uh, individual metric names here. So this way, you can, if you say, if say you use namespace to uh, 
you assign namespace to individual developer teams, you can then say, this development team is responsible for this amount of volume. Um, hey guys, cut it out, knock the volume down, save us some costs. Well, that's all I have for you today. To get started, visit g.co slash cloud slash manage Prometheus. You don't need to be enabled. It's open for all customers right now. That's g.co slash cloud slash manage Prometheus. And if you have any other questions, requests, or feedback, please visit our community page where Google product experts and folks from the community are answering questions. Just search for Google Cloud Community and Cloud Operations. Enjoy other sessions on observability by searching for Ollie in depth on YouTube. Once again, I'm Lee Yanko. Thank you for joining me today. That's all.